We have finally, or we've actually signed up for a high rocks. We've got one on the books. We've got a March high rocks. So now we're going to tailor a little bit of our training to make sure that we're actually prepared for it. So we obviously do a lot of CrossFit style training, which will carry over, but this is quite a bit more running in a high rock. So we'll start tailoring just a little bit more of the movements that we do to where we don't just get like beat up or overwhelmed by the volume that we've got in the high rocks. But we've tried doing a couple of these over the past few years and it's just never worked out. So we're really excited. It's gonna be the one in Houston in a couple months. So if you guys have the ability to, we'd love to see you down there. So for high rocks, a lot of you guys are asking what's the difference between high rocks and CrossFit? You've seen us do a lot of CrossFit stuff in the past. Well, CrossFit is gonna have higher skill gymnastics, Olympic weightlifting, a heavier barbell, and lots of different movements. You never know when you go to a CrossFit competition what you're necessarily going to be doing and it could be different from competition to competition. Well in a high rocks it's the same fitness race every single time you compete in it or every single time you do it and what that fitness race is comprised of is eight stations and it's running mixed with functional fitness. So you're going to start with a one kilometer or 1,000 meter run then you're going to go into a station. There's eight of them so I'm going to actually read them so I make sure I keep them in order but the first station is going to be a ski erg and it's actually a thousand meter ski erg. The second one is going to be a 50 meter sled push and it's on this really thick carpet which makes the sled feel a little bit heavier and harder to move. Then you're going to go into a sled pull followed by burpee broad jumps and it's going to be 80 meters of burpee broad jumps. Then you're going to move into a thousand meter row, a 200 meter farmer's carry, a hundred meter sandbag lunge and you're going to end the workout with 75 or 100 wall balls. And before each of those stations, you always do that 1,000 meter run. So it's a 1,000 meter run, station one, a 1,000 meter run, station two, and you'll work your way through all eight stations. Today's video is sponsored by Element. Element has been a longtime supporter of this channel and something that I believe wholeheartedly in and I use every single day. Element is not just for athletes. Element is for everyone. If you wanna focus, you wanna feel better, and you wanna be hydrated, Element is perfect to add to your daily routine. I start my morning by adding one Element packet to my water every single morning. It not only helps me feel hydrated, but it also helps me with my focus and helps me with brain fog. Unflavored Element has zero grams of carbs and flavored Element only has two grams of carbs per packet. So it's perfect for anyone on a ketogenic diet or following any specific guidelines. Each element packet is comprised of 1,000 milligrams of sodium, 200 milligrams of potassium, and 60 milligrams of magnesium. On top of that, it has no added sugar and no BS. It has everything you need and nothing you don't. Headaches, muscle cramps, fatigue, all of those can be signs of dehydration and electrolytes help hydrate us so we don't have to experience those symptoms. When you click the link below, Element's offering you all eight single surfing packets for free so that you can try out all of the flavors or share with a salty friend. That's eight single serving packets free with any order as long as you click the link below. And this deal is only good through my link. D-R-I-N-K-L-M-N-T dot com forward slash Christy Ermo, K-R-I-S-T-I-E-R-A-M-O. That's drinkelement.com forward slash Christy Ermo to get your eight single serving packets free with any order today. Now, back to today's video. So for this workout today, we're gonna kind of use this as a chance to get comfortable with all of these movements with the running paired in. So the goal is not gonna be to sprint our 400 meter runs, but to find a consistent pace that we can hold every single time, time after time, when we get back on the runner. We wanna be comfortable, but uncomfortable. We shouldn't be running super easy, but we also don't wanna feel gas going into that next movement. Then on the machines for the skier and the rower, the same thing, trying to find a pace. We're actually skiing in calories today and we're rowing in calories. For the actual workout, it will be in meters. Uh, but we're just gonna go a little extra power output for a little higher intensity, and then we'll work on meters on a different style workout. The goal for the burpee broad jumps, as well as the farmer carry, as well as the wall balls, is just gonna be to try to keep moving throughout those sets, not stopping, and trying to keep the heart rate down while we're working. So just being efficient with our movement, we'll see how this goes, we'll, get, we'll report back once we finish. The training that I have been doing recently has been more of like bodybuilding and conditioning. So it's a little bit lower heart rate, lower intensity. And we'll jump into class a couple times a week with a little bit higher intensity um, and then longer runs. So the intensity of these runs was definitely chewing me up. I prefer running on the runner than outside, so that gave me you know a little bit of a 
maybe advantage, but most of the other movements I felt pretty good on. The wall balls, the rowing, stuff we do pretty often, but the intensity of the running, my heart rate was just through the roof. It's a really good workout. Yeah. Well, definitely have to pick up the training for it. I thought it was great. It's kind of like how hard do you want to push and it's definitely your fitness. So that's what it is. It talks about is it takes running paired with functional fitness. And so there's no high skills that are slowing you down. If you're strong enough to move the wall ball and you're strong enough to move the sled and the kettlebells, really your heart rate becomes that limiting factor. And so just kind of knowing your body and where you can push, I think Patrick and I are pushing in opposite places. I was trying to cruise a little bit more on the run and then push the machines. And I think he was probably going the opposite because he's very comfortable on the machines and the wall balls and he has to work on the run a little bit more. So it's really about knowing your body and where you can push yourself. It is fun and the kind of lower barrier to entry as far as like skill goes, we don't have the higher skill stuff that we'd see in CrossFit with the snatches and the muscle ups and handstand push ups, anything like that where there's a skill level that can give people a leg up or not. The, there really isn't necessarily anywhere anybody's going to get a leg up and there's not really a big enough gap in any of the individual movements in between the runs that somebody who's just really good at one of these things is gonna be able to necessarily get ahead because the limiting factor is just capacity. Uh, it's not how good you are at wall balls, it's not how good you are at lunges, it's just capacity. At least for people who have like uh, fitness backgrounds, I could see it maybe being a little bit of the opposite if you're a runner coming into high rocks where the running is really easy for you but maybe a heavy sled pull or the wall balls chew you up a little bit. But for most people who have had some familiarity with those movements, it's not, uh, it's not gonna be like a big, that's not gonna beat you up. That's not gonna be the thing that limits you. It's just gonna be how hard you're willing to work and the intensity that you're willing to push. Doing a full high rocks, that, was, that definitely highlights that I need to do a little bit more training specific to that so that I don't get eaten up because that was about, we were under, we we're about 28 minutes. Chris was a little under. I was a little bit over 28 minutes. A high rocks for me is probably gonna take me, you know, hour 10-ish. So I'm gonna have double the amount of volume and running. So I've got to certainly build up to that, but I still like the style of training that we've been doing, which is a little bit more weightlifting and conditioning base where uh, kind of mixing those together compound movements and high volume accessory work, which makes us feel good, get a good pump and a good sweat, but we'll definitely have to throw this in maybe once or twice a week as we build up over the next couple months. Well, you guys should definitely give that workout a try. We'll drop it below, put it on the screen. Workouts like this also shop in our IBEX program and the lift run program on Wednesdays and Saturdays. So you get a longer version on Saturday, a shorter version on Wednesday, if you wanna check that out. I'm just really excited that one, Patrick and I get to do something together because when I first started CrossFit, we were doing CrossFit together and then he shifted into coaching me and he was always on the sidelines and I was the one on the floor. And now we both have something to work towards and we're just excited to be part of the community. So if you guys are gonna be there down in Houston, make sure you comment below. We would love to meet up with you. We would love to see you. We'd love to hear about your experience training for High Rocks and any goals that you have. We hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget, smash the like button. It really does help our channel and we can't wait to see you guys in the next one. If there's any questions you have, any other styles of training you wanna see, definitely drop them below and we'll make sure we get them answered for you. Have a great day.